Okay, so today's video, we're gonna be starting doing a series on used GPUs. It is now 2020, and a lot of these old video cards are still being sold. Facebook Marketplace, um, eBay, LetGo, OfferUp, yada yada, all those other places. So, um, a lot of new video cards are getting ready to come out this year. There's a lot of old ones that um, are starting to date themselves and everything, but when I'm building a budget computer, a lot of times the budget price range that people are looking for is $200, and $200 is the price margin that people want to pay for an intro gaming computer. Now for $200, you're not going to get the best, but you could get something that's actually pretty decent and viable. And one of the games that people ask all the time is, can this thing play Fortnite? I mean, for some reason in my area, that's all people ask. When I put a computer up there for $200 for sale, can it play Fortnite? I show a demonstration of Fortnite, everybody's happy, they take the computer to go. So usually I flip these computers for about $150 to $200, I maybe make a 10% profit margin. That's usually average what you're going to make. But going back into these video cards, so I like to browse with eBay a lot. And on eBay, you can find some great deals. I mean, some sellers just want to get rid of them real quick. And then you have those sellers who just want to charge you an arm and a leg. So browsing online, the two most common video cards I'm finding for the $40 to $60 price range is the R9 380, which is right over here. And I'll talk about this one, why it doesn't have any fans, and the GTX 760. Both great video cards, both run good, no issues, but we'll talk about these in a second. So when you're looking online, the first thing you want to do is find out what is the seller's return policy. So when I go on eBay, I want to see what the seller has to offer as far as returns. So if they say no returns, you're taking more of a gamble. If they do say returns, then you have some security on it unless they falsely advertise that it work, and then it doesn't work, then you could get into eBay's arbitration, all that stuff, which I've done a few times, and it's actually worked out in my favor, so. Um, this one right over here is a GT, uh, not GT, this is an R9 380. I bought this for $10 on eBay. Can you imagine why I bought this for $10 on eBay? It has no fan. That's right, it has no fan. Uh, seller listed it as a working, running video card. It was used for mining, but the fans went bad whatever the case, whatever the story might happen, but it has no fans. So I paid $10 for this. This video card sells between, I've seen it as low as 40, I've seen it as high as $70. Actually not a bad video card. I think uh, this came out in 2015. Let me pull it up real quick. Yeah, 2015 is when this video card came out. So it's already a five year old video card. Um, the seller did say it was used for mining. It did have a mining bios on it. And so I got to flash it to regular bios. But I have a fan, so $10 for this. Flashing is not gonna cost you anything, but what you can do is you can actually take just regular 80 millimeter fans, do some PWM adapters, plug it into a Molex, SATA, and the fan will work. Now granted, it's gonna work at a high, um, it's not gonna, the fan speeds are not gonna adjust based upon the temperatures, but it's still gonna work, so that's one thing. This one over here is a R7250. I bought this one for another $10. Why did I buy this one, a R7250, you ask? Well, 240, it's $10. I mean, it's a good spare computer. Sometimes people just need a video card just to work and they don't need anything fancy. So that fits that budget range. And this does play a little Fortnite. I have actually tried a little Fortnite on it and it does work pretty good. Another one I got over here is a GTX 760. This one I paid $50 for it. Runs fine, no issues, whatever. So when you get these video cards, there's a few things that you want to do, and we're actually going to be talking about this in this video. The first thing you want to do is, number one, what was the video card used for? Uh, if it was used for mining, it's not the end of the world. These mining video cards are actually pretty good. A lot of times they're undervolt at just for heat, uh, just to lower the heat and wattage use, all that good stuff. And they still work good. Flash some regular bios in it, and if you're not comfortable, there's a couple of videos that uh, people do on how to do it. It's not terribly hard, but it can be tricky. So. That's the risk you take. I'm comfortable doing it, so I don't mind taking a chance with that. Um, with these mining cards, what I have found is, and if you take a look at this, I don't know how well this comes on the video go. As you can see, it's kind of rusty and crusty on there. So, yeah. Don't let that scare you. If you get it for the right price, like this one, $10, um, it will work. I've actually tried this. I've turned it on. This one works. Of course, I can't run it too long because it don't have a fan. It's um, underclocked like crazy. So a quick BIOS flash and two fans. This will actually be a good video card to go. Um, so that's one thing you want to look for. Another thing you want to look for too is what type of game you're looking to play. Um, I get online and I always look at the minimum specs of what's out there for the games that people play. When a customer uh, wants me to build a computer or asks about budget computers, I look at the minimum specs and I build the video card, build the computer based upon that spec for these computers. So 
These have actually worked pretty good for um, minimum specs for Fortnite, which, like I said, in my area, everybody asks all about Fortnite. And there's actually a couple other games that you can actually play with this, and we'll do a separate video on these video cards for that. So that's one thing you want to look for. Another thing that you want to look for is, um, look right over here. I don't know if this comes in real good in the camera, see if we could get that. See how dusty and crusty that is? This is pretty gross. This video card is actually pretty gross. So, yeah, you know, you want to look at the condition of the video card. It's going to tell you how hard it was used, how hard it wasn't used. Like, I had a seller one time say, oh, never used for anything. Had it for about a month, but it was full of dust and cobwebs like crazy. So, yeah, call the seller out on that. So once you get these video cards, next thing you want to do is... I like to do is I plug them into the computer right away. The reason why is is because a lot of sellers, they're big on, well, if you took it apart, then you can't return it. Well, truth of the matter is, yeah, they're right. They have the right to, you know, if they see that you damaged it or caused physical damage or they can articulate that, yeah, they can refuse to return it. So first thing I do is I take these video cards, I plug them into the computer, and I do a quick stress test on them. Except this one. This one has no fan. Don't do a stress test on that. That I knew buying it for 10 bucks. Um, I plug this one in right over here. Um, it was running a little hot, start a little thermal throttling over here, but that's because you can see, I mean, it's covered in dust. So as soon as I can verify that they run, um, I'll use uh, Heaven Benchmark. Heaven Benchmark is really good at putting a little torture on it. And that gives me an idea if this video card is stable. Now these video cards, they're all stable. They all work. I've already done that. I test that. Like I said, $10 on eBay, $10 on eBay, $50 on eBay. So that's what you want to do first. After you've done that, the next thing you want to consider doing is cleaning it up and taking it apart, which um, we're going to do a separate video on that, on what I do when I get these used video cards, how I give them some loving to clean them up and get them running real good. So after you've bought that, you verified they work, put them on a bench test, run whatever program you want to use. Like I said, I like to use Heaven Benchmark, and I have found that to actually stress this video card real good. Clean them up. Fresh thermal paste, check the thermal pads, get all this dust out, and we'll talk about what I use to clean this up. And then after that's done, you have your video card that's good to go. And this is going to work whether you're spending $50, $60 on a video card, $100, $120, $130, $140. Now, something to keep in mind, if you're buying one of these newer video cards, like um, 20 series or maybe even some 10 series that still might fall within it, if the video card is still under warranty, there's a lot of debate on whether a manufacturer can uh, deny you for puncturing these warranty stickers, which this one doesn't have one. There we go whether they could deny you for puncturing these warranty stickers. Here's my rule of thumb. If this video card is under warranty and I buy it used, I plug it into my computer, it doesn't work, I will contact the manufacturer, give them the serial number, whatever serial number there is, and they will honor the warranty. I actually had a video card. It was a GT Asus Strix 1080. I paid $200 for that video card. And this is when they were not just coming out, but maybe a year after they were coming out. It was still under warranty. Plugged it in, artifacting, all those issues called ASUS, they warrantied, I got a new card in. So if it's still under warranty, don't try to fix it. That's at your own risk. See if the manufacturer will actually uh, take care of the warranty. EVGA is great. ASUS is OK. Um, they take a little longer. Sometimes they're a little finicky on that. So that's my advice for when you get these video cards. So um, shop online, take a look at it, see what the seller is willing to do. If it's missing a fan, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, you could get some 80 millimeter fans, pop them in, um, get some adapters, run it straight into your SATA, or even run into your motherboard. That'll work real good. Um, if they've been used for mining, you can flash the mining BIOS and put new bio, uh, regular BIOS on it. It'll work just as good. If they're crusty like this, clean them out real good, and we'll do a separate video on that. And they'll work real gr great. No issues on that. So when you're buying a used video card, those are the things that I typically look for. I like to buy on eBay because they have their warranty, and eBay has their arbitration thing that you can do if somebody tries to dupe you on that. If you're buying on the used marketplace, it's more of a risk, especially like Facebook and Lego, because you can't warranty it. You can't test it. And if the seller decides, hey, this is a bogus video card I'm going to sell, good luck getting in touch with them. It is what it is. I mean, yeah, you could try to contact local law enforcement, but Good luck with that. So those are some things that to consider when you're buying it. I, pref I pr um, personally, when I'm buying these used video cards, if I'm going to get them on Facebook or anything, it's got to be a steal of a deal. Sometimes I'll contact the seller, see if they could play me a video of it in the computer running. That kind of helps me feel better, especially if I'm paying a higher price, like two, three hundred dollars for a used video card. But, you know, if I saw this video card for ten dollars and they said it worked, I take the chance. I mean, ten dollars is not much. I'm not saying I'm rich or anything, but I mean, you're not going to lose a lot for $10. So something to consider, something to um, 
to think about when you're buying these used video cards. So that's my quick guide, my quick blurb on buying a used video card. So if you have any questions, comment down below. Let me know. I want to hear your experiences. Um, like, subscribe, and we'll see what we come up with next.